Welcome back to VQ Intel. Today we're going to be talking about dot plots. Now, dot plots is one of many ways of displaying a single categorical, uh, sorry, quantitative variable. And oftentimes students are left wondering, well, do I draw a dot plot or do I draw something else? So first off, let's look at the situations when dot plots are useful. Now you want to use a dot plot when you're analyzing a single quantitative variable and you have a small number of values. Now that's kind of relative. For some people that means 5, for some people it means 20. 20 to 30 is about the most you're going to have with a dot plot, especially if you're drawing it by hand. There are, there are uh, apps online where you can draw a dot plot on a computer, and in that case then you don't care about the number. With a dot plot, you want to see the individual values exactly. That means you can actually look and pinpoint every single data point and know exactly what the value is. Dot plots, you can do that. With others, you can't. You want to see the shape of the distribution. Are they skewed to the left, skewed to the right? Is it normal? A dot plot can show you that. Also, you have two or more values that you want to compare. You can use dot plots and compare two different variables like we'll see in a minute. So these are the circumstances you want when you're using dot plots. So here's an example of a dot plot. And so each dot represents an observational unit. So first off, first question is what is the variable? Well they, always they usually tell you what the variable is right here. It's hours spent on homework per week. And if the dot plot doesn't tell you that, then you're going to have a hard time figuring out, well, what is that variable? Now, what is the observational unit? Well, let's see, hours spent on homework. Well, who spends hours on homework? Odds are we're talking about students, is we're getting this, these from students. All right, next question. How many did at least five hours per week? So that means five hours and up. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight students did at least five hours of homework per week. Next one, what was the most common answer? Well, here we can see that the common answer was one hour per, of homework per week. And then the last one, what was the data set that created this dot plot? So looking at this, we can create, we can recreate what the data set was. So zero happened once. One is going to happen five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Two is going to happen four times. So one, two, three, four. Three happens three times. Four happens four times. 5 happens twice, 6 happens 3 times, 8 happens twice, and 9 happens once. So there is our data set. So this is the set of data that would create this dot plot. So on the next one, here we have two dot plots. So this dot plot is measuring hours of exercise, so that's a variable. And the other one is measuring hours of video games. So what is the observational unit? Well, it's going to be people, because only people do exercises in video games. If you want to be specific, you may say that, well, that's probably teenagers spending six or more hours on video games. You might be able to say that, but to be absolutely sure, we'll just say people. Now, how many exercised for more than six hours? So we're looking at the exercise dot plot, and here we've got one, two, three, four. So that's four people. The next one, how many played video games for more than six hours? Now, when it says more than, that means not including six. So that means we don't count these two. So we start here at seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 people. Last one, how many hours of exercise did the person 
who played no video games get? So here we have this person who played no video games. How many hours of exercise? And the answer is, we don't know. A lot of people will try and say, well, the lowest on this dot plot has to be the lowest on this. No, it doesn't. Or some people will say if they got no video game time, then they exercise the most. We don't know that. We absolutely do not know that. So the best thing we can say is we don't know. If each dot were uniquely shaped, and then you could tell one person from another, then you could answer that question. But as it is now, they're just dots. Next one. Below is data gathered from this class answering the question, how many states have you visited? So what is the observational unit? Well, I gather these from my students, so that is the observational unit. So next, I want to draw this dot plot. So what's the lowest number? 3. What's the highest number? 20. Now with most graphs, when you start, you draw your scale first. So we'll go from 0 to 20, we'll cut it in half, 10, cut it in half again, 5, 15. I'll fill in the other numbers, but I won't label them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, so now 3 occurs twice, so I'm going to put two dots above the 3, 4 occurs once, so 1 above the 4, 5 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 occurs once, 10 occurs 1, 2, 3, 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 15 occurs once, and 20 happens once. So there is our dot plot based on this data. Next one. Below is the data gathered from this class answering the question, how many hours have you slept in the past 24 hours? So since I gather this from this class, the observational unit are students. So now, to draw the dot plot, the lowest number is 5, the highest number is 11. So I'm going to put my low number at 5, and my high number at 15. Again, you can't cut into 10, you have to go out in order to include all your data. So 10 is halfway in between, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14. So two people got 5 hours in the last 24 hours, two people got 6, Two people got seven. One, two, three, four, five people got eight. Two people got ten. And one person got eleven. So that is what our dot plot will look like. Now, some people may say, well, instead of going from five to fifteen, do instead four to twelve. Yeah, that's okay. You can do that. If you cut that, that'll be eight. 6, 10, and then it would look like that, so you don't have as much empty space off the right-hand side. That's okay, too. Thanks for watching. Links to the companion, links to all the ways to support the channel are down below. And remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.